I'm Jenny Allen. I'm the Managing Director of Net Zero at We Mean Business Coalition. A Climate Transition Action Plan, or also known as a CTAP, is really a, a somewhat new thing in the, the climate space. Um, so for a long time, companies would set a climate goal, they would go to work on that goal, and then eventually they would tell people if they met the goal or not. But now, as the stakes seem higher, right, and we see climate events happening on a regular basis, stakeholders like customers and investors really want to know that companies are taking the steps they need to to actually meet the goals way before they get to the end of that goal. So when you're building a transition plan, the four elements that are really critical are one, making sure you're addressing emissions reductions, two, that you're addressing internal governance, and three, policy advocacy, and four, making sure you're incorporating a just transition into your strategies and plans. So often if you ask a company if they have a transition plan, they will say yes. But what they're really saying yes to is that they have a strategy for how they're going to reach their climate commitment. And unfortunately, there is a little bit of a distinction between those two. The purpose of a plan is to communicate externally to stakeholders who are important to your organization what you are doing in the near term. Climate transition action plans are critically important right now because while we have thousands of companies who've set climate commitments, we don't know how they're doing and if they're making the progress necessary to keep us on track to limit warming to 1.5 degrees. And so a transition plan can really help communicate what steps they're taking and how they plan to actually hit that goal. And increasingly, we're also seeing not just investors wanting this information, but governments requiring it and others in the global climate space really looking to it as proof that companies are serious about their climate commitments and the actions that they're taking. The strongest business case right now for companies to do transition plans is really their investor relations. One of the realities, which often gets glossed over, is just the lag time sometimes between the actions a company takes and the emissions reductions that they will deliver. And having a really strong transition plan gives you a space to really tell that story so that, you know, maybe you're switching your entire fleet to electric vehicles. That's going to take time. So how do you communicate that to your stakeholders? And the transition plan is the perfect place to do that. Make sure it's public facing and that folks can find it. Two, it really should be focused on the near term actions you're going to take. And then three, make sure after a year has passed, you go back and you look at that plan and you assess how you did publicly. Companies often aren't necessarily saying what their near-term actions are. And so it becomes more of a backward looking, here's all the things we've done, when really a transition plan is ideally forward looking and telling stakeholders the things you haven't done yet, but are about to do. There are lots of great resources out there to help companies both build plans and then also execute against those plans. So there's great resources around building a plan provided by GFANS, provided by We Mean Business Coalition. CDP also has some great stuff out there. In addition to that, if companies need help actually implementing against those plans, there are many resources, including EDF is developing a net zero action accelerator. At We Mean Business, we have the four A's of climate leadership where we sign posts to the leading initiatives and guidance documents that are out there to help companies. And we also have something called the SME Climate Hub, where we help small and medium-sized businesses on their climate journey, all the way from making a commitment to doing the reporting at the back end.